brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Kiera is in Buffalo, New York. What's going on? Hi, thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. So I am 24 and I have over a half a million dollars in debt. Wow. Is that consumer debt or does that include a mortgage? So that's with my mortgage and my car loan. Okay. That makes me at least breathe a little easier. So let's walk through the consumer debt. How much consumer debt do you have? What are the amounts? None. None? Oh, so it's just your mortgage. Yeah, my mortgage is four hundred ninety thousand. Okay. What's the rest? Um, and then my car, I owe fifty four thousand left on it. Oh, okay. So that would, we would label anything non mortgage as consumer debt, if that helps. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. My so car, you have fifty four thousand yeah. on the car. Anything else? No. And then four ninety on the mortgage. How much do you make a year? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm self employed, so it kind of varies some years. Um, my last taxes, it was. 250000 Awesome. At 24, that's amazing. What yeah. do you do? Um, I'm a reseller. All right. And what's your question today? So my question is, I have some money in the bank. I have some in savings. I have a retirement account. Um, but my biggest question is the car payment kind of weighs, is weighing heavy on me. Um, and I wanted to get your opinion Um on where like my money should be going kind of. So I have in a high yield savings account about 46,000. Um, so I was wondering, I kind of wanted to get rid of my car. Like after listening to you guys, um, I wish I would have listened sooner, but I, I don't think I need this luxury car. Um, and it was kind of an impulse decision just to buy it. Um, so I was wondering if I should take some of this money and get rid of my car. As in sell it and downgrade to a different car with cash? Well, I, um, I'm engaged. So we have two cars um, right now, um, and we would just be sharing the one car. Is that, is that a reasonable lifestyle switch for you, Kira, to just go down to one car? Yes. Okay. Uh, how much could you sell it for? So that's the thing that is um, unfortunate because, like, I'm um, – you know, the car, um, I got different quotes and stuff. So I owe 54 left and my offer was 37,000. That's like, where was this offer from? Um, well that was CarMax. Um, I've tried to sell it like personally, um, like online. Um, and I'm going into a dealership on Saturday to do some kind of like auction thing to see if they can get maybe even a little bit more. I my guess is private party is going to be your best bet to sell this for top dollar mm-hmm. versus going to a dealership. Of course, they're going to lowball you because they are going to sell it for that higher amount. Yeah, and what so, kind of car is it? It's a BMW X5. Okay. Um, what year yeah, is it? Twenty nineteen. Okay. Okay. You know, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, if I were you, if you're if you're honest. To, about yourself and your day-to-day life and how that looks that you really don't feel like you need a car like if that really is true because you make plenty of money p.s you can afford to get another car maybe a different car and you can do something different but don't feel like a not having a car is your only option i just want to give you that window that you have great money saved if you needed to get a car you could okay so just and if you know wanted that. to pay off this car you could yes that's right and just keep it yeah but if you don't want it and you're like it's just too nice i don't need it you are upside down. So what I would try to do almost is just say, hey, I want to try to get 40 for it. A little bit more than what was quoted in a private sell- selling situation is probably the way you're going to do that. And then you're going to have to say, okay, I got 14000 of my own money that I'm going to have to just you know, finish off the loan. And, we, and take that out of your high yield savings account. Yeah, we, we just call that stupid tax when we do things that we're like, mm-hmm. dang it, and just take it out of your high yield um, and then start from there. And if you want a different car or, you know, something down the road, I would use that money saved that you have to get a great used car. Um, yeah, that you want. So when are, when are you guys going to get married? Hopefully with like next year. Okay. So not a date. Are you guys going to live in this house that you have a mortgage on right now? Yes. You are. Okay. Is he coming into the marriage with any, um, real estate? Um, 
Wait, what do you mean by that question? Like, does he does he own a home too? Like, will he be selling? No, no. Okay. This is our home. We bought we bought it together um, last year. Okay, okay. But um, he's also the thing. I the only reason why this car is weighing so heavy on me is because I know this is like my only debt. But I, I don't mean to put his business out there. But he has a lot of debt, so it's um. And we're just trying. We are trying to like clear his debt right now. Um. So you're not trying why, to pay like, off his of debt, though, right? Okay. So one thing you have to realize, Kira, is yes, I understand that you guys are engaged. You're, I believe, will get married next year. But you guys legally, you're not married. You're roommates. I mean, from a from a legal standpoint, you realize that, right? I know relationally yeah. and love and future plans, all the things. So with your money, the wisest thing you can do, which sounds harsh, I know, in your situation, because you guys have already bought a house together, you keep things separate financially. We have talked to so many people, Kira, who have use their money to pay off someone's debts and they start working together and suddenly the wedding next year doesn't happen and you are out all this money. And so keep protecting yourself in that sense is necessary during this time because you have no legal contract. I mean, there's there's nothing legally binding you guys together. If you were married, that's a different story. Um, but from this standpoint, I would not be paying on his debt. So you need to be focused on you he needs to be focused on him. And then you have to say, yeah, when we get married, we do become one. All of this, then we can work as a team. But I would not be doing that until then. Until you say, I do, and you sign that marriage license and there's a ring on the finger, you guys are not, I would not work together as one when it comes to the money. Now, you guys can be encouraging and all of that, but I would be have very separate financial lives at this point. Okay, that makes sense. And I should have mentioned like the car would be his that we'd be using. So we'd be paying on his loan. So there's a loan on his car. Yeah. What's the left one on that, that we would be splitting the payment. Um, I actually just asked him. He didn't answer, but I think it's around like 40000 I wouldn't do any Kira, of this. I, w- I wouldn't do that. Just go get your own car with cash. Don't pay on a car that you don't even own. Yeah, it's, that's not even in your name. You would, You have no... The point to get so rid of this car is to get keep... rid of the payment, and you're just going to take on another payment, but less. Mm-hmm. With one car. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Honestly, I if I were you, I would get rid of this car because I think it's a good exercise for you. You're 24. You're like, I made a crazy purchase. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have bought it. And I, if I were you, I would go get you know a $10,000 whatever, whatever. Go drive that. He needs to work on his stuff. I mean, like his debts... Uh, his income, all of that needs to be his. This does not need to be your responsibility. Because what what concerns me a little bit, and I could be reading into it, is that you're so responsible. You're obviously extremely bright. You're making $250,000 as a 24-year-old. I mean, like, you're a go-getter, okay? And I'm not saying he isn't, but in some cases, what we find is that he gets the benefit and reaps the benefit of all the greatness that you have. But then you get no benefit from him <laughs> from a legal standpoint because you're not married. So... I, I would be very cautious in all of that sharing and, and buying a house together too. These, this is for the listener out there. Do not put both of your names on a deed of a house if you are not mm-hmm. legally married. It gets you in a mess, you guys. It'll get you in a mess. Create your free every dollar budget today. The simplest way to budget for your life.